Good afternoon from BMW of Ocala. I'm Scotty and I'm here with Dustin. We're both product geniuses over here. And today we're going to show you how to go over your brand new X6. Now, first of all, we want to wish you congratulations. I'm sure it already arrived on your doorstep over there. But we thought we'd show you some cool features just in case your local dealership forgot to maybe show you some cool things. So we thought we'd take the liberty and show you how to work them ourselves. Now, this is about as close as we can get to your personal build of your X6, minus a few things, and this one might have a little bit of different options, and of course, color is going to be one of the quick ones we'll notice over here, as yours is a black sapphire metallic, while this is going to be mineral white. But let's go ahead and get started. Now, starting on the outside of the car, what we're definitely going to want to do is, to, first of all, just show you how to unlock and lock the car. Now, to unlock it, you just want to make sure the key is in your pocket, or at least somewhere on your person, like it is for right now, which see right over here. I'm just going to place this in my pocket. Now there's two different ways to unlock the car. You can of course press the unlock button right over here on the handle and lock it pressing the BMW logo or on the door handles we just reach for the door handle to unlock it or press these little lines right over here to lock it like so. And the car is giving us an alert right now honking the horn because the car's engine is still on just for this video. But let's go ahead and unlock it here. Now what's very nice about the X6 is they actually place these sensors on all four doors. So that's very useful, especially if you have any uh, kids or anything that like to take rides with you. But let's go ahead and come to the trunk. Now to pop the trunk, just like the doors, there's two ways to open it here, at least from the outside. First of all, would it be to press this little button right over here, or go ahead, come up just below the BMW logo right here and give it a little squeeze with the key nearby. Of course, electronic tailgate's always very nice on the car. Now we come to one of the very first features we want to discuss, is how to lower the trunk. Now, of course, you can actually lower it inside the vehicle, which we'll showcase in a little bit. But first of all, we can either hit this little button right over here, which would just close the trunk. But if we hit the little lock button right next to it, it would actually lock the car up afterwards. So a pretty cool little feature there. Now, of course, we come to the back of the trunk. We have our little privacy screen, which we can yank back right over here or entirely take out of the car in case you need a little bit of extra luggage space. Now, the X6, depending on equipment, also have quite a bit of extra little hidden storage under here. So you can see on this one, plenty of it, uh, extra storage over here. I would suggest maybe putting like electronics, newly purchased electronics, or things maybe you don't want people seeing inside the car, placed under there. You also have a little extra hidden compartment, a very hidden compartment, right down over here. And you can see actually this is where your cargo net is kept. Pretty cool stuff in there. And that's also where I recommend maybe keeping your, uh, your, your wheel locks as well. And of course there's a 12 volt outlet right over here in the back as well, in case you have to fill up like an air mattress or anything like that while you're on a trip to the beach. But let's go ahead and close this puppy up. And continue on. Now, depending on how great a gas mod you're getting on your car, you may have come to the first time to fill it up. But just in case, if you do need to fill up the car, there is no button to unlock the door. You just got to make sure the car itself is unlocked. And all you have to do is just press on any part of the little gas door right over here, lift it up. And as you can see right over here, it says that it takes a minimum of 89 octane, but we do recommend 93, especially with six cylinder engines. Go ahead and give this little guy a click. It pops out, and they even have a nice little holder for it as well, which is really cool. Fill it up, go ahead and close it back up, and you're good to go. And now it's good to go. Now, when the car locks, that system itself also locks up. All right, now that's it for the outside. Let's go ahead and come into the driver's side over here. Now, first of all, we're going to go over some buttons over here. And, of course, there will be a little bit of differences between your car and this one, but we're going to try to point out those differences first of all. Now, to pop the hood on the car, you give this little guy a yank, and of course, just go to the front of the hood and give it a yank up, but let's go ahead and do that. The car's giving us an alert that the hood has been popped. Come over here to the center. Now that we have the hood open, this is going to be the same engine as yours. This is an inline six twin scroll turbo engine, generating about 300 horsepower and about 300 foot-pounds of torque with an eight-speed automatic transmission. You can see how neat and tidy the engine bay is, of course, I'm sure yours is as well. You can see how far back the engine actually sits over the drive wheels. This helps in giving BMWs those 50-50 weight balance. And of course, God forbid, if you ever do have to jump the car, even though the battery is located in the rear, they still put the terminals right over here in the front. So you just give this little guy a yank up here. That's going to be your positive terminal, which, of course, you do want to hook up first. And then your ground is actually going to be this little bolt right over here. Pretty nice little designation for everything. Makes things nice and simple. We'll go ahead and close that back up. And we'll close the hood. All right, well, let's go ahead and start coming over here to the driver's side once again. And the first things we're going to point out, of course, are going to be the door locks, as they like to move different places in, uh, in BMW's lineup. On the X6, they're going to be located right in the door, right in front of your door handle, nice and easy. And I mentioned earlier how to pop and lower your trunk from the outside of the vehicle, and to do it from inside the vehicle is going to be this little switch right over here. 
You're gonna press it down the poppet, which we can see it going ahead and raising up for us. And if I lift and hold that same button, ah, gotta put the key in the car. If I lift and hold that same button, we'll actually see the trunk lowering down right from inside the car. Pretty cool stuff. Coming down from there is gonna be how to adjust your mirrors. And of course, we definitely wanna get all these settings set for you. And now the thing to note with BMW is they work based on a profile system as opposed to just memory one and two. Whoever unlocks the car is whose settings it goes to. So it's very important to note that you wanna keep the keys separate while you're setting all your profile settings and everything like that. Well, the first thing we're gonna go over, of course, is gonna be how to adjust your mirrors. This little switch right over here chooses what mirror you want to adjust, and this little dial actually performs the adjustment. So you can see right over there. Now, if you wanna fold in the mirrors, you just hit the button right over here, designate to the left of that. You can see the mirrors folding in. And the same button again would fold them right back out. Pretty cool little feature there. Really good for tight parking spaces. Of course, the window control is fairly basic. Press it down a little bit to go down, just a little bit. Pressing it all the way would lower it down all the way in that one motion. Go ahead and raise it right back up. And that two resistance function comes into play in a lot of different things, including cruise control, which we'll touch up on later. But now, if you have any kids in the car, pressing this little guy would lock the, rear, uh, lock the rear windows. But since you have the cold weather package, which also includes front and rear heated seats, as well as a heated steering wheel, it also disables the rear heated seats. So just in case, if you don't want anybody to maybe get a little too toasty back there, hit that little button, it'll disable the rear heated seats for them. And that's it. Now, coming over here, headlight operation is very easy as well. This is a position that is gonna be kept on for the majority of the car's life. This is your automatic headlight position. In this position, the car will turn on and off your headlights as needed, depending on brightness. In this position, your headlights are off, but your daytime running lights will still be on. This is the one position you don't wanna really turn the car off in. This is your parking lamps. Essentially, if you're stuck on the side of the road without an emergency, maybe you're just lost a little bit somewhere, you're trying to look over somewhere on the map, maybe a place to eat or anything like that, which of course you can use the navigation system to locate, which is pretty darn cool. This position right over here is gonna be just manual low beams if you wanna turn it on yourself. But let's come all the way back over to automatic and keep it right there. The button to the left over here is gonna be your fog lamps, which will give us a little indication when we hit that right over here on the dash. You can see right there on the left hand side. Turn it back off and the light disappears. This little dial right over here, which we won't be able to showcase today because it only works at adjusting your brightness of everything at nighttime. All it does is adjust the brightness of your odometer, your navigation and AC lights at nighttime. All right. Now the X6s do have a little hidden cubby right over here, which is pretty cool. A lot of people use that for cell phones as well as some other uses as well. But let's go ahead and talk about some other adjustments. Now steering wheel, very easy to adjust. Use this little switch to choose where you want the steering wheel to actually go. And of course it's telescopic as well as adjustable up and down. Pretty cool stuff here. Now that we have that all set, we're gonna come down over here to seat setting. Now you also have the multi-contour seats which gives you up to 20 ways of adjustment on these seats. So everything can be adjusted. Starting from the front right over here, this is gonna be your thigh support. which you can see, extends or retracts your thigh support in the front of the seat. You can, of course, adjust forward, back, height, as well as tilt of the seat, in case you want the front part to be tilted up a little bit. In this case, we want it to go all the way back there so we have enough room when we come inside. From here, we can adjust the backrest, which this does the whole back with this whole switch here. You can see the whole back moving there. There's also a little switch inside of there, which you can see right here. This actually adjusts your upper back, which is really cool. Just getting the car specifically to however you like it. You can see it just from there. And of course, adjust the headrest is also electronic. So we just either lift up on this same switch. You can see right there, raising it up and lowering it down. Now we have a little bit of extra buttons behind here. These are going to be for your bolsters. So this hugs you along the sides of your back. You won't be able to see these too well, but they would actually squeeze the side bolsters of the seat in, holding you in a little better for cornering and uh, track use or even just long drives. Down below that, we have your lumbar support. Pressing it forward extends it out. And if you would want it higher on your back or lower on your back, or just wanted to retract it back. And that's about it. Now, once you have everything set on the seat, you're gonna come over here and hit set, then one. And that's it. Now everything is saved for your profile. And that's one thing very important to note. If you were to come into the car with your other key, your seat setting will not be there. Very important to note. You have to make sure you unlock the car with your key. Now there are ways around that, of course, if you'd like a little, little bit of information about that, just let us know. 
but let's go ahead and come on inside. Now we get the seat all the way back over here. It gives us a little better view. All right. Now let's go ahead and talk about high beam control. Very easy to operate in this car. Pull it towards it a flash or press it away to keep it on if it's dark enough out. Now, if it's not dark enough out, the car won't even let us turn it on just to make sure maybe we don't burn out the bulbs or just forget that it is on. Maybe when it starts getting too dark out, you actually like blind people. Now, turn signals work a little differently than they do in other vehicles. Press it up lightly for three ticks for lane change, which is just like most. Press it up all the way, keeps it going, but it always returns back to center no matter what. And if you want to disable it, just press it up or down lightly again to turn it off. Once again, a two resistance point function, just like we mentioned on the windows. Now we have BC right over here, which stands for uh, Basic Computer. Essentially changes the displayed information right over here on the screen. Just show you some trip information. So we can see this car is 84 miles still empty. It is uh, 543 right now and it's 73 degrees outside. You can see now here's your compass. Average MPG, and we reset that by holding BC, same button we were pressing before. Current MPG, average miles an hour, so on and so forth. We come back to total trip computer here. Now, next subject we're going to talk about is going to be cruise control. Now, your car actually has active cruise control, so it's a little bit different than this one. Uh, quite a bit different, I should actually say. But the button layout is going to be very similar. You're going to turn it on or off on this little button right over here. Nice and easy. Get to the speed you want to set it at, and you would simply hit set. Now, from there, you're all done. But you have a little bit of extra buttons as well. Resume is going to be maybe if you... If you started braking and you want to get right back up to speed, you would just hit resume here. Or, of course, you can adjust the speed with this old dial. Once again, two resistance point function on it. Up a little bit for one mile an hour, or up all the way for five miles an hour, increase or decrease in speed. Now, the active cruise control comes into play. On these little two dead buttons right over here on this car, you will actually have a closer distance to the car in front of you and further distance from the car in front of you. Essentially, active cruise control is made to monitor distance as well as speed. So if a car in front of me starts doing 60 miles an hour or you were doing 70, it will lower you down to 60 miles an hour to maintain that distance until either you move out of the way or they move out of the way and then bring you right back up to 70 miles an hour. And then this little guy would actually choose how far or how close you are to that car in front of you. And that's it. Now, of course, paddle shifters, we're not going to get into that too much today. But if you do have any further questions on those, then once again, just don't, feel, uh, don't be afraid to give us a call over here or email us or anything like that. All right. Coming over to this side. This is going to be a lot of your media controls on the car. And this one has heads up display, which you should be able to see kind of hovering there, almost like a little ghost kind of there on the windshield. Pretty cool stuff. Right now, we have a little white box and it's zero miles per hour. And I want to see if I can keep that in contact now. Pressing the voice command button right over here would activate voice commands, which they are especially wonderful on this car. You can use them to find restaurants or anything like that simply, simply by stating, find me, and then the thing you're looking for, and it would immediately go right to it, or navigate to, you can pretty much use it for anything. Now, volume control is gonna be right over here, or of course, right over here. The change radio stations, there's about five different ways to realistically do it. One of the ways is gonna be using this little scroll wheel right over here. As I twist this little wheel, you actually see the radio station changing. And once you see one you want to actually listen to, you're going to press that same dial forward. And it would actually start listening to it. Now, right now, it's just giving us an alert that a door is open. So we're going to go ahead and close that up here. There we are. Let's go back to that. And now we're listening to it. Pretty cool thing there. Mode right over here, as well as down over here. Uh, is going to switch between all sources of active media on the car, including FM, AM, satellite, CD, anything that's currently active. So if you didn't have a CD inside the car, it wouldn't cycle the CD. So pretty cool little hidden function there. Now, since you have driver's assistance package, that little white box that we see right over there is actually going to be the speed limit of the road that you're on. It's pretty neat there. Once you have a phone call coming in, which will actually show you who's calling and from which phone, since you can have actually two phones fully connected up at the same time, which we'll go over in just a little bit here, it'll show you who's calling you as well as which phone it's actually coming from. And to answer it, you hit the little phone button over here and the same exact button to hang it up. And that's it. All right, next subject we're gonna go to is gonna be windshield wipers. Now, we've been needing this a lot over here in Florida. I don't know how it's gonna be up there in Michigan, but in order to activate automatic windshield wipers, all you have to do is simply press this little button here at the end. The windshield wipers give us a single sweep across to let you know that the system is on itself, and that's it. And of course, we get a little green indicator to let us know that it's on as well. Now, we have this little dial right over here, which most people assume is for the intermittent mode. 
This is actually the sensitivity of the automatic windshield wipers. Uh, so essentially, if you if it's misting out and you don't feel like the windshield wipers are going fast enough, you turn this dial upwards, which it is set for the max right now. Now, if you want to wash the windshield wipers yourself, you're going to pull the whole stock towards you, which I got a little bug right there, so we need to get rid of that. There we go, much better. All right, nice and easy there. All right, and now if you want to manually turn on windshield wipers, which is very rarely used, but you just press this up lightly for a slow sweep or up all the way for a faster sweep. And you press it down twice to turn it off, and then you're good to go. All right. Continuing on from there, your start and stop button. Now you may notice whenever you turn off the car, the radio and everything still stays on in the car. That is perfectly normal. As long as you either your foot's off the brake, you can hit the start stop button one more time and it'll shut off everything, as well as raise up the steering wheel for you to make it a little easier to get in and out. Or you could simply lock the car. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about a thing. After about 14 minutes, every single computer module on the car will shut off. So you don't really have to worry about too much about draining the battery or anything like that. It's perfectly fine. It's essentially used if you're at a gas station or something, gassing up the car. You can still have the fans blowing, the radio playing without having to worry about any spark generation or anything like that from the engine. Just minimizes the risk there, but still lets you have maximum comfort. To the left is going to be the automatic start and stop feature, which is this little orange glowing light right over here. Now this essentially means when you come to red light, the car would shut off to save you a bit on gas. And this button alone can save you 3% on gas. If the light is on, the car will stay on and not shut off at a red light. So car on, light on. If the light is off, the car will shut off at a red light, depending if it meets certain criteria, just to save you a bit on gas. So we'll turn that back on. Coming across right over here, we do have these little guys right over here. These are mistaken a lot of times for just kind of a switch between heat and cold, but these actually have a very interesting function. They're almost like a fine tune setting for the car. Maybe we have the car set at 72 degrees, where we want the, but maybe we want the air to blow in our faces to be a little warmer. So we just go like this and turn this wheel up, and now the air coming out of this vent and this one, we turn that one up, is going to be a little warmer than 72 degrees, just allow you to fully customize everything on the car. And we'll turn this back to blue because it is a little toasty out. Hazards are, of course, going to be right over here. And down below this is going to be a driving assistant plus function, which yours, of course, has. That's going to be the uh, lane departure warning, blind spot mitigation or uh, blind spot systems, uh, crash mitigation system, pedestrian warning systems. And of course, yours actually has night vision, which is a very cool, very rare option, which for the button for that will actually be located by your headlight switch about right about over here. Now, this car does not have it. In fact, no car in our lot actually has it. It's a very cool and rare option. What that'll do is at nighttime, even if the system is not on on your dash, the system is still actually active. Essentially what it's made to do is detect animals and pedestrians on a, a dark country road or just a dark road and give you an alert about that and even intervene if needed. Of course, with applying uh, braking systems on the car, really cool system on there. Uh, I, I hope to hear some stories about that one. Tell me, because uh, some people actually use that for uh, maybe locating engine blocks sitting on the side of the road, maybe trying to generate some state revenue. Uh, not going to say any certain companies of mine there, but uh, cops maybe. Now, this little guy, let's go ahead and talk about AC. This little guy is going to be where you want the air to come from. And down below that for you is going to be heated seats. This is going to be your fan speed, temperature control, as well as auto mode. Now, whenever you hit auto mode, it maintains the fan speed as well as where the air is coming from for you. All you have to do is just adjust the temperature around it. But just like the automatic windshield wipers, even though it's in auto mode, you can still adjust the fan speed for yourself. If you don't feel like it's blowing hard enough, turn it up. Or if you feel like it's blowing too much, turn it down a little bit. Really, once again, allows you to fine tune everything on the car. Sync right over here matches the both sides together. So I'm just gonna mess that up. We can see they match together. If I turn up this one, it turns up the other one. But if I were to turn this one, it turns the system off. Right over here, which you might be using here pretty soon, once winter starts coming up, is gonna be your front windshield defroster. Which, of course, we'll just turn full fee heat blast up here. Nice and easy. Down below that is going to be electronic rear windshield defroster. Max AC for those hot days, which for now I'm sure you're using. AC, even if you want heat, you can always leave that on. All you have to do is just to turn the temperature up around that, and then you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and set this guy down right here, make things a little easier. This is going to be for your air recirculation right over here. You actually have three different modes. Automatic, manual, and off. In automatic mode, it allows outside air within the car, unless there's any high levels of pollutants, allergens, smoke, anything like that that would be unhealthy for you, the car will actually detect that and turn on air circulation for you. 
But if you smell a garbage truck to something that really just doesn't smell too good, you're going to hit M and it would turn on air recirculation entirely. In this mode, this allows outside air within the car no matter what. You're at the mercy of the elements there, so I recommend keeping it in this mode right over here. Nice and easy. All right. And of course, the rest of the buttons are just mirrored on the opposite side over here. So pretty nice and easy. Coming right down over here, another way of changing your radio stations is going to be next station, previous station. Uh, to eject the CD is going to be right over here. And of course, we place the CD right over here. We already discussed mode, which switches in between all sources of active media on the car. Band switches only in between FM, AM, and satellite. Of course, we have volume here, as we mentioned earlier. And then we have the radio's 1 through 8 button. Now, unlike any other car manufacturer, BMW actually allows those to not be just limited to radio, but actually be controlled to have any function on the car. So if you want number eight to be your home address, you can actually assign it as such. But a pretty cool function is to, if you forget what something's assigned to, just touch the button. Well, actually, you see at the top of the screen, it actually says not assigned. Pretty cool stuff. And once again, this is saved per profile. So you don't have to fight over who gets what buttons or anything like that. If you unlock the car with your key, you have your own eight buttons. If another person comes inside the car with their key, they have their own eight buttons. So a pretty cool little thing to note there. Down below that, we have a little USB charger right over here. This would be used for uh, just for charging your phone. Pretty easy stuff. This also lets me know this car actually has Wi-Fi hotspot. Pretty neat stuff there. Of course, you have your cup holders right down over here. Not too much to mention over here, except you have a cigarette lighter, just in case, right there. We're going to be getting to the gear selector here in just a moment. But for now, we're going to go ahead and look at your mirror. Of course, we have your garage door clickers right over here, which will gladly make a separate video on how to program that if you need to. So just let us know about that. We're always happy to get y'all taken care of there. We always get a lot of questions about this little guy right over here. This is actually for your alarm system. Just to let you know that the system is active. Now, when you lock the car with a single button click, the alarm system inside the car is active. So if anything moves around, the alarm is gonna go off. If you were to lock the car once more though, either way, either by doing it on the door or by the key, this little light right over here will actually illuminate for about two seconds to let you know the interior motion sensor of the car has been disabled. In case you have any dogs or kids in the car that are just going to be in there for a couple minutes, but you still want to lock up the car, that's one thing you just want to be wary of. Coming up a little farther, angles are going to get a little bit weird here. We're going to have your reading lights right over here. Nice and easy. And this middle one actually turns up every light inside the car, including footwell lights, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. You can see a little bit of gloss on the on the brake pedal there. Rear footwell lights, rear lights, everything. Turns on every single interior light on the car. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Now the X5 and X6s, aha, they get sunglass holders. Always fun to see in these cars. Actually a lot rarer to see than normal. This little guy right up here is actually gonna be your SOS button, which hopefully you'll never have to use, but just in case you're stuck on the side of the road, flat tire, running a gas, government, just any sort of emergency on the car, you press this little guy down and hit that little guy right there and they'll get you all taken care of. Very nice people. The moon roof is controlled by this little guy right here. Works just like the windows. There's two resistance points and depending on where you want to move it, that's where you move the button. So if you want the screen to close, we press the button forward. Let me see the screen close in there. Now if you want the screen open because it's a nice day out today, we scoot it back. Now let's say we want the glass back. We just scoot it back one more time. There she goes. And that's it there. We'll close that back up. Of course, the little guy right over here to the right would just inform us that the airbag uh, would either be turned on or off. Uh, of course, if a child, if I remember correctly, is under 72 pounds, that light will illuminate, to let you know that the airbag has been turned off. And that's about it for up on the overhead console. Let's go ahead and get back to the gear selector over here. All right, we should have took a short break over here, but let's go ahead and talk about the gear selector. Starting in the front right over here, this is going to be traction control. Now, realistically, we get no use for this one too much in Florida, except maybe if we want to have a little bit of a tire peeling fun. But this is going to be primarily used if you need a little bit of tire slip while you're driving in snow, which hopefully you'll get a little more use out of that over there. Now, press it once, it disables traction control, but stability control stays active, which essentially means the engine will not cut power in order to prevent tire slip, but if you start taking a corner a little too fast, brakes will still be automatically applied in order to prevent rollover, or understeer, or oversteer. But if we press and hold this same button, we'll get DSC is off, which we'll see here in just a moment, which means you're entirely on your own. We can also see the gauges have switched over to sport mode, which looks really cool. So a lot of cool little things right over there. 
we're going to hit it again to turn it right back on. Down below this, right over here, depending on what package you have, and in which we know in your case is M Sport, uh, you're going to have Eco Pro Mode, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Now, whenever you turn on the car, you're always in Comfort Mode, just the safest neutral mode of the car. If you want to drive a little more sporty, we're going to press Sport up once. You can see your dials turn to red. Hit it once again quickly, and we go into Sport Plus mode. Now, Sport and Sport Plus are almost exactly the same, except Sport Plus allows the traction control to be a little bit loosened up, so you can have a little bit of fun, but the car's not going to let you get a little too crazy. It'll still bring you back nice and safe. Now, essentially, what Sport mode is going to do is sharpen up the throttle response. Exhaust is going to get a little louder. The steering is going to get a little heavier and more direct. And of course, the car is just going to feel entirely much more hunkered down and ready to drive faster. Transmission is going to downshift. You can get a little faster acceleration. Lots of different changes on the car just to make it drive much more sporty. Press it back down. We go into comfort mode. Once again, the neutral mode of the car. Press it again. We go into eco pro mode. This is almost the opposite. The wild response is going to get a little more numb. The, the steering is going to be in comfort mode. This is essentially going to do many different things to get you the best gas mileage possible. Now, in this mode, you can actually save with 20% better on gas mileage. And it works best at speeds below 55 miles an hour. So a lot of city traffic, this will actually be the best mode to drive it in. And what you can see is actually the dials turn blue over here. It looks really sharp too. But this can do things like decouple the AC compressor, decouple the transmission, turn off heated mirrors, dial back AC, tons of different things to get you better gas mileage. It also turns off our little light over here so the car will shut off at a red light. But we're gonna go back into comfort mode. Down below this, right over here, this is gonna be a park distance control which is this guy right over here. In this case, this car has a 360 view camera, which I believe yours should have that as well, which you can see a 360 view around the car. Pretty cool stuff. And if I go in reverse, you'll actually see little guidance lines to show me where the car would exactly go. Pretty cool things there. We'll go back into park there. But we can also activate the rear view camera from here. Now we start talking about some of the basic iDrive controls. In this case, so we're gonna talk about touchscreen. So I'm just gonna hit the little R camera symbol right over here. And there's our backup camera. And of course our front and rear sensors as well. Let's go ahead and turn that back off. And that's that there. The little button down below that is gonna be a camera symbol. This is gonna be the wide angle front view camera. Essentially used if you're having to pull into a blind intersection or anything like that. Uh, it'll actually alert you uh, if left or right, if a car starts coming either way and give you a little triangle, which will appear right over here and right over here. Much like the blind spot sensors on your mirror. Pretty cool stuff. So we'll go ahead and turn that off right there. Electronic parking brake. Works just like a normal handbrake. You lift it up to engage it, press it down to disengage it, and you're good to go. Now, auto hold can only be activated once you're in drive and everybody has their seatbelt on, at least the front seats. And right now we can't activate because we don't have our seatbelts on, but this allows you essentially when you come to a red light or a stop sign or anything, once you come to a complete stop, you can actually lift your foot up off the brake and you're not gonna roll anywhere, forward or backwards. Just hold you nicely in place. And of course, once you hit the gas again, you take right off. Very useful function, especially for those really long red lights. Now we come to the gear selector. The gear selector, I always say it's operating like you're shaking somebody's hand. So you're gonna come over here, you're gonna give a little squeeze with your thumb right here, as you can see that little button. Make sure your foot's on the brake for any major gear change. You pull it all the way towards you for drive. As you can see that illuminates there. As well as on the dash, we get a D. Squeeze, press all the way forward for reverse, which will cause our backup camera to come on automatically. And depending on which side you have the mirror switch on, cause your rear, your uh, right rear view mirror to dip down to give you a better view of the curb. But we want to come back into drive mode because now we're going to talk about sport mode for the transmission, which is entirely different than sport mode for the car. This is essentially almost like a true sport plus mode. This will hold the gears even longer. And since you have M Sport, you actually get a sport automatic transmission, so it'll shift actually a little faster and more aggressively. And then right now we see on our desk we're in sport one. But if I were to press the gear selector forward or give a little paddle shifter squeeze, we go into M mode, which means you're in manual mode. Almost like driving a standard transmission car, but without a clutch. So upshift, upshift, downshift, downshift. Pretty cool stuff there. Really gets you the full potential out of these cars and lets you have a lot of fun. To go back into park, even in this mode, all you have to do is hit P and it scoots right back over for you. And then you're good to go. All right, that concludes this little area right over here. But let's go ahead and talk about the iDrive system. Now, your X6 is a 2017, so it's gonna feature touchscreen just as this one does, as well as the new uh, iDrive 5.0 dial right over here. So it's gonna operate exactly the same from either way. In case of this video, we're gonna do a little combination of both to kind of get you familiar with both. Now, to get to the main menu, 
We're either gonna hit the little home button right over here or hit the menu button right here on our controller. The little controller is gonna have media, communications, map, and navigation. Let's see if I can get the navigation right there. Perfect. Now, whenever you hit any of these buttons once, such as media, it brings you back to the last page you're on for that section. In this case, we got Van Halen. Pretty great there. Now, if we wanted to change sources, once again, we've mentioned a couple of ways to do it, but another way to do it is to hit that same button one more time. Now we can choose between satellite, FM, AM, and music collection. Now, right now we're only seeing a few things because these are the only things active right now on the car. We don't have the CD in, so we don't see CD. We don't have USB, so no USB. But once you plug those things in, they will pop up. Otherwise, it'll just disappear. But select FM, and we're good to go. Nice and easy there. Now, we're going to try to go into a little bit of detail over here. But of course, while you're on FM or AM, this is going to show you the stations that are coming in at the best reception. But let's say you want to listen to a station that's maybe not coming in so well, like in our case, 96.7. How do I actually go about listening to that? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come over here to the left-hand side. You see this little guy right over here? That's where we're going to get to. So we can either touch it or we swipe the controller to wherever we want to go. So I'm going to push the controller over to the left and it scoots us over there. And then we twist it up or down to select where we want to go. In this case, manual search. From here, we can go to whatever station we want to go to. In this case, 96.7. Now we got some classic rock filling. And that's about it there. But let's go ahead and come to the next page. Communications. And once again, if you want to go in depth on anything, please let us know. We're always happy to do more videos here. We're just kind of not going too much in depth here, just for the sake of time here. Now, coming down from here, this is going to be communications. Now, your car has Apple CarPlay. And we're going to actually show you how to hook that up initially because your communications page is going to look differently once it's actually set up. So in this case, do I if you wouldn't mind scooting the phone even a little closer here? Thank you. So in this case, we're using uh, Matt, one of our sa uh, sales advisors' iPhones over here because we, uh, myself and Dustin both have Androids. We're going to go to Settings on his iPhone, and we're going to go to Bluetooth. And on the car, we're going to go to Manage Mobile Devices. <laughs> we can see Matt has quite a few BMWs hooked up. We're going to hit Connect New Device. And depending on what you would want to do, in this case, Apple CarPlay is what we're going to want to do. We're going to hit Confirm. And now it lets us know, okay, on your phone, go ahead and look for BMW 68932. For your case, it's going to be the last six of your VIN. On the phone, we can see, oh, there's BMW 68932. Dustin's going to hit Pair over there and Allow. And I'm going to hit OK over here. Now we just play the waiting game. And we can see it's saying connected on the phone, but we still got to wait just a little bit over here because we're going to get a couple more prompts as the as the iDrive system is letting us know. Aha, uh -huh. uh, our little phone is saying use CarPlay, but we're going to go and hit that. Now we play the waiting game once again. And there it is. There's our Apple CarPlay. And this can be operated via touchscreen or once again, our little iDrive controller. So pretty cool stuff right over here. And you can use it just like your iPhone. Now, if you want to get back to the main menu, all you can do is all you have to do is hit either the menu button or this little guy right over here. And now we're right back to the main menu of everything. Nice and easy. Now, once you're on the main menu, if you want to get back to the page you were on, like your Apple CarPlay, you actually get a new symbol that pops up right over here. And that'll bring you back to CarPlay. Nice and easy. And that's it. Now, coming on from over here, communications. Now, communications, since you have Apple CarPlay all hooked up, you're pretty much stuck over there. You have to use CarPlay to do any of the phone functions of the car, but it's pretty darn cool there. But let's go ahead and talk about navigation. Now, for navigation, I recommend doing everything, everything, everything with the little map button. Don't worry about the nav button itself right down over here. We're going to do everything from map. When you come to map, you come to this screen right over here. Now, what well, our goal is to get to this little flag symbol right over here. So once again, we can just touch it or we can swipe the controller to the left. We're on that little top option right over here where it says guidance. We're going to select that depending on what we'd want to do. In this case, we only have one option, so enter a new destination, depending on what we want to do. In this case, we're going to set a home address as an example because it operates just like entering in an address, but we're going to set the dealership as the home address over here. And of course, we live in Florida, so there's going to be a little bit of differences here. Ours is in Ocala. And now you can twist the dial like a rotary phone to get to it. You can speak the address, or you can even write it right in the little dial right over here. And Dustin, if you wouldn't mind putting an A for me, and you can actually see it writes it right on there. 
and the car already auto completes itself. So now that it's on the right hand side where we see Ocala, we're going to push the button over to the right. This saves us some time. Now, right now we're on Southwest College Road, so we're going to go S, W, College Road, and we can see, oh, there it is on the right hand side, so let's come on over here. And then we go five, one, four, five. We hit OK. And now we're going to hit accept. And now our home address is saved. This is the same exact way you would enter in an address, except under enter address. Now, if you wanted to save your home address as one of these programmable buttons that we mentioned earlier, is number eight, what we're going to do is actually while we're hovered over on home, we're going to press and hold number eight. And it would actually save that to the function. So let's go ahead and come over here, press and hold number eight. And there we go. Now it's saved our home address. Now if I hit number eight, it's going to bring us right where we actually are. Please proceed to the highlighted route. And we can see we'll arrive by 6.11 p.m. Or in this case, this has military time going. So 8 11, or 18.11. It's 0.7 miles away, which is our little Volkswagen one right down the road. Now, we have an address going. How do we cancel it? You can do it by voice commands. Or what we recommend is the same place we went to start navigation is the same place we're going to go to end it. Right over here in the top left-hand corner, hit that little flag symbol again, or swipe the control over to the left, and we just hit stop guidance. And that's it. We're all done. And that's the basics of navigation there. Once again, of course, anything you want to see go into further in-depth, let us know. But let's go in and go through some settings, because lots of settings on these cars need to be set even from the factory. So we're going to quickly blast through some settings over here, and we're going to access that by going menu, my vehicle, <clears throat> Starting off with the vehicle setting and iDrive setting, we're going to start off with vehicle. Lighting. Exterior lighting. You want to make sure pathway lighting is set for probably about 40 seconds. One touch turn signals is turned on. Daytime running lights are turned on. Welcoming lights are turned on. Now, daytime running lights are the accenting lights on the outside of the vehicle. Welcoming lights, whenever you unlock the car, all the lights on the inside come on. And pathway lighting is whenever you turn off the vehicle and you pull the high beam stock towards you, like so. It'll actually keep your uh, headlights on for probably about 40 seconds. So you can see way to your car, uh, way out of your car a little easier. Interior lighting though, this is where we get to some good stuff. We're gonna wanna turn that brightness all the way up because it looks cool. But depending on what color your interior is, in your case, you have cognac. So you have a couple different combinations that will look pretty good. Some people like blue. We have white and of course little variations of each too. And of course, orange. Now, we won't be able to see it too well, maybe just a slightest of glow over here, but at nighttime, you'll really see, aha, there's a little spot we can see it. Just dark enough in there. But you'll really be able to notice this at nighttime. Gives it a really stylish look along the car. Really cool stuff in there. Doors and key. Depending on whether you like your just your driver's door to unlock the car, or uh, whenever you open up your car, just the driver's door to be unlocked, or all the doors, you press down and select it, and now it's saved there. And once again, this is per key, and you want to make sure everything over here is checked maybe not except for unlock at the end of the trip. Uh, depending on whether or not you like your car, that when you hit park, it automatically unlocks the doors. Entirely up to you. Uh, just depends on opinion there. We'll back out of there. Intelligent safety. We wanna make sure this is on early. This is gonna be your frontal collision warning. If you're sort of coming up on a car a little too quickly, the car will give you an earlier alert as opposed to a later one there. Speed warning. We like to drive BMWs a little faster than usual. We're not Mercedes. We don't like to drive all slow and stuff. So we don't like to turn this one on too much, but just in case, you want to set for 84 miles an hour or so, preventing that reckless driving ticket as opposed to just a speeding ticket. If you were to hit 85 at this point, the car will chime at you to let you know, hey, you're going a little fast, maybe you want to slow down. And that's it. Backing out of there, we have parking. We just want to make sure automatic PDC activation is turned on. Driving mode, want to make sure this is set for drivetrain and chassis. And Eco Pro mode looks similar to this. That's about it. Climate functions, we're not going to get into that one too much here. GPS tracking. Now, depending if you're wanting to use the phone app to allow you to get a little extra functionality of your car, you want to make sure GPS tracking is turned on. This allows you to actually track the car within about a 300 yard radius to almost an like exact location. In case you're maybe at the mall or something like that and you can't remember where you parked, very useful little feature. Mobile devices. This is where we go to to once again connect up or delete the device. One of the ways to do it. Languages. We want to come in here. Make sure service speech recognition is turned on as well as speech during voice output is turned on. And maybe we'll come to voice control and maybe change it to English UK. Give it a, a little cooler accent when you're doing voice commands. Pretty neat stuff. 
touchpad, we recommend speller, search fields, and audio feedback turn on, but not map. Displays, heads up display. This is where you can come to to adjust the height and brightness of your heads up display. What's the, uh, the brightness of your control display? And what's actually being displayed on your instrument panel right over here? In this case, we just want all that on. Date and time, we want to make sure this is set for automatic and this one is not. Yours may be set to military time like this one. In this case, you just want to select it for 12 hours, but we'll keep on military time in the meantime here. Units, we want to make sure this is all set for US unless you prefer metric. Tone, aha, now you have Harman Kardon, so you have a lot of adjustments in here. This one's entirely up to the driver, but there is so much customization. Now you maybe want a little bit more treble, a little bit more bass, and the slightest amount of rear fade. Usually about two to three ticks seems to do good for the X6s, and definitely Logic 7 surround sounds turned on. Equalizer, this is the neutral mode over here, but I'm just gonna show you a couple examples of what a particular one will sound pretty good with. Once again, depending on the genre of music, it might be a little different. We're gonna go like that, a little more bass there bit there, a little higher mids, and that's it right there. Just gives you a little better sound quality. Notifications, want to make sure it's all on. Pop-ups, another radio favorite alert, we want to make sure these are both on here. Software update, we take care of that, or your local dealership would take care of that when the car comes in for servicing. Getting started, we already finished there. And data privacy, maybe if you decide to trade in the car, this would wipe out everything on it. So, we don't want to do that. And I believe that'll conclude everything for the basic operations of the car. All right, so let's go and come back on onto the outside. And if you do have any further questions on anything, you might be able to get Dustin actually in this picture. Ah, there he is. He keeps trying to hide, but we got him this time. Right. <laughs> well, we just wanted to wish you one more congratulations. And once again, any questions you have on this vehicle and any operations or anything at all, we're always here to take care of you. Anything we can do, let us know. Email us, call us, anything. We'll be able to get y'all taken care of. Other than that, congratulations, and we hope to hear from you soon. Take care.